got your Bibles this morning. My message today is third day. Got good news for you. Your third day is coming. Your third day is now and forever. See, the resurrection, like Mark just read, the resurrection is the most important part of our faith. The resurrection is a fact. The resurrection is our hope. The resurrection is a work of grace. The resurrection is why we become followers of Jesus Christ. The resurrection happened on the third day. I got good news this morning. Your third day is coming. Your third day is coming. Matthew 28, 1 through 10 that Mark just read talks about a third day. Do you realize that seven times in the gospel writings when Jesus was alive, he said he would rise on the third day. See, Jesus knew it. Jesus spoke it. Jesus declared it. Jesus defended it. He said, when this body is dead, it will rise again on the third day. Despite your third day coming, there's timing issues. You see, it says in God's kingdom that a day may seem like a thousand years in the kingdom of God. So you may be thinking, well, Pastor Steve, I don't think my third day's come yet. I, I've been in a dark place. I've been in a, a trial. I've been in a sickness. I've been in a, a season where it seems like it, it never ends. I've got good news for you. Your third day's coming. Come on, somebody. Your third day is coming today. Because it says, let me, let me just read for Scripture. On the third day, the earth brought forth vegetation, seed-bearing plants of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw a place, Mount Moriah, from afar. There he intends to offer his son Isaac as a burnt offering to God, yet he assures his companions, we will worship and we will return. On the third day, Pharaoh releases his chief cupbearer from the death row. On the third day, Joseph releases his brothers from prison in Egypt. On the third day, the Israelites request Pharaoh's permission to make a three-day journey to offer sacrifices in the desert to worship God. On the third day, the plague, nine, the plague of darkness in Egypt ends, though the Israelites enjoyed light in their dwellings. On the third day, God descends to Mount Sinai in fire with the sound of the shofar. He then reveals the ten words, Israel's construction of new life as a nation and their resurrection from the death of slavery in Egypt. Do you realize that on the third day, the Israelites purified themselves with water after being in contact with the dead? On the third day, do you realize that Joseph spies emerged from hiding in, the, in Jericho to return to their commander? On the third day, after asking Asking God for release. King Hezekiah is healed of a fatal disease and offers thanks in the temple. Do you realize that on the third day, Jonah is expelled from the belly of the fish? And on the third day, after fasting and prayer, Esther puts on a royal apparel, enters the palace of the Persian king in order to thwart a death plot against her people. I got good news for you. Your third day is coming. Come on, somebody. Your third day is coming. You may feel like you're in a dark place, just like the people that I just read about, but I got good news. Your third day is coming. Your third day is coming. But you know, it says in Matthew chapter 27, verse 62, though, the enemy knows your third day is coming too. The next day, after the preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said that after three days I'll rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said, take the guards, go, make the tomb secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting a guard. See, the enemy knows your third day is coming. Here's a question, though. If, if the enemy didn't really believe in the resurrection, then why did he do all the drastic measures to secure the tomb? Come on, if, 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 if the devil and the enemy really didn't believe in the resurrection, why do you go to all the trouble to secure the tomb? You want to know why? Because the enemy is fearful. Because the enemy knows his third day is coming. 
The enemy knows his third day is coming too. But the enemy is trying to, will try to make it difficult for your third day to come. He is trying to make it difficult for the body of Jesus to leave. See, the enemy wants to block your third day from coming. It says in Mark 16, 3, Mary said, who, who will roll a stone away? This is a good point. The enemy is trying to block Jesus' body from rising from the dead, and the same way the enemy is trying to put a blockage in your life from breakthrough and healing. We all have barriers and blockages. We, we all feel like sometimes there's no way out of our trial or our storm. Sometimes we're, we're in a season where it seems like everything's impossible. Something's in the way. Lord, I thought my third day was coming, but I got a barrier in front of my entry point. Lord, what do I do? And just like Mary, who, who's going to roll this stone away? Oh, well, guess what? Today, stop worrying about it. Stop striving. Stop working. Stop trying. Stop trying to move the stone. Because guess what? The stone's not your problem, folks. The stone is not your issue. It's God's. Let that sink in for a second. The stone is not your problem today. The stone is God's problem. God wants to remove the stone, and he will remove the stone. And, you know, this, it says here in verse 20, after the Sabbath. That's interesting because the day preceding the resurrection is important because it's about, it's, the Sabbath is a time of rest. When it feels like your third day is not coming, I think, I think it's a good plan to rest. Rest in your faith. Rest in hope and the promise that your third day will come. Jesus spoke it. Jesus defended it. Jesus knew. He knew that even on the cross that he would die. And he said, Father, forgive them for they do not what they do. And, and when he said it is finished, Jesus knew his third day was coming. He knew it. So he didn't have to fight it. He didn't have to wake up and smack the devil up a little bit. He just, no, he laid himself to rest. He went to rest in that tomb and he let God do the work. He let his father remove the stone for him. The good news is, is that the stone's not our problem today. It's God's. If there's a barrier facing your third day, you just have to hold out on hope and faith that God will remove that stone for you. The preparation day is the third day. You see, the two days leading up to the third day in the Bible describes this. It's a time of concealment. It's a time of seclusion and burial. The days leading up to the resurrection is preparation for us to serve and meet God. It's, it's a time of testing, discer discerning. It's approaching a verdict, death or acquittal, that, that the days leading up to the resurrection are important. we got to find rest and hope in the Lord and let God remove the stone for us. You see, your third day also releases power. Romans 8, 11 says, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you today. The word of God. See, we have that your third day comes because it's a work of God. As we, as we just read through scripture from Genesis leading all the way up to, to Esther, we see all these great men and women of God experience their third days. But as we look at third day and the biblical pattern of the word of God, here's what third day represents. Third day represents hope. Third day represents emergence of, from circumstances of, of lifelessness, prison, captivity, famine, illness, or even an ocean fish. I got good news for you. Your third day is coming because third day is one of testing situations when life is put on the line, but obedience wins unexpected reversal and deliverance. The third day in the Bible represents the appearance of new life after the concealment or death. Third day in the Bible represents sprouting life from the new earth. Third day represents revival, healing, restoration of life. So in conclusion, what does the third day in the Bible represent? Third day is a transition moment of release from realms of death or emergence to new life. Come on, somebody. Your third day is coming. Your third day is coming today. Your third day is a work of God. It's God's problem to remove the stone. The work of God also, it's, it's a work of grace. As we see at the end of Matthew 28, Jesus says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. The work of grace, your, your third day is a work of God's grace. You see, it's a work of grace. Why? Because your third day releases a grace on your life, an authority on your life to do the things that God's called you to do. Your third day also becomes your testimony to share with those in need. When you encounter the resurrection life of your third day, God gives you a testimony that the world needs and that the world needs you to share. Just like Mark read in the scriptures, Jesus commanded them to go and tell everybody what had happened. When God does something incredible in your life, when you encounter a third day, and when your third day arrives, God wants you to rise up with a fresh word, a fresh testimony that you could release to your coworkers, family, and friends today. I got good news for you. Your third day is coming. Come on, your third day is coming today. But you know, it says in 1 Corinthians 15 that your third day is now and forever. Your third day is coming. You have power. It's a work of God's grace on your life. But guess what? Your third day is now and your third day is forever. 1 Corinthians 15 says that when Jesus rose from the dead, Paul said he was the first fruits of the resurrection, meaning there are more to follow, that as a believer in Jesus Christ, we have hope that our, we have a future third day. It's called eternity. It is called heaven. There's a third day for you. When you come to Christ, your name's written in the land's book of life. You have a reservation point. I got good news for you. You have a third day that's going to come to you on earth, but you got a third day that's going to usher you right into eternity. Amen? Come on, somebody. Your third day is now. Your third day is forever. I love that. As we look in Hosea, Hosea chapter 6, 1 through 3 says, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us that we may live in his presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord today. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. Jesus wants to revive you and restore you today. You're probably thinking, Pastor Steve, I... I'm not sure if my third day will ever come, but i got good news for you. Today, your third day can come by placing your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If our worship team could come back up, I just want to share with you that, that today, your third day could come by placing your trust and hope in Jesus. The gospel is a simple gospel of good news. Restoration, resurrection, I remember back in 92 when I gave my heart to Christ and I was at my lowest point of alcoholism and suicide and at that point the Lord came into my heart and my life. He restored me out of that pit. My third day came on January 28, 1992, but, but I had other, I've had other third day encounters and when you're a believer in Jesus, you can expect a third day to happen every day. When you're going through a tough time, I believe this message will carry you through. You may be going through a trial right now, but I got good news for you. Your third day is coming. Hold out for hope. Hold out in an anchor that your third day is coming today. The Bible is pretty clear, though. There's one way, and his name is Jesus. Jesus made a way for us. He made a way so that we could be saved. He is our one way. Like John on the Lord's Day, it says in Revelation chapter 1, the Lord's Day, it's, it's the Lord's Day is the third day. When John was in Revelation chapter 1, praying and worshiping, having an encounter, it was on the Lord's Day, it was on the third day that God, that God revealed himself in a very tangible way. When, when God revealed himself to the apostle John, the Bible says he lay as though he were dead. It's because he saw Jesus in his resurrected body. Not his earthly body that John knew, but he saw Jesus in the fullness of his resurrected heavenly body. And that, and, and that encounter laid John out on the floor. He was speechless. I got good news for you. Your third day is coming. 
Your third day is coming now and forever. And one day, we're all going to have that same encounter that the Apostle John had. We're all going to have a day when we're going to look at our Savior in his eyes. And when we look at him, we're, we're not going to be speechless. We're not going to have any words to describe it because when we encounter his presence and love that we've been singing all morning, that love will overwhelm us and we'll have no choice but to hit the deck ourselves because our third day is coming. Your third day is coming on earth, but your third day is coming for now and forever and eternity. That's God's plan. That's God's hope. That's why Jesus had to rise from the dead is because he wants all his kids to come home. He wants to enjoy all of his children one day in heaven. He wants, he's right now preparing place settings in heaven so that we can have a beautiful meal with him someday. Let's just take a moment and let's just bow our heads and close our eyes and let's just take a moment on that third day. Reflect on that third day. Our third day is coming. Yes, the enemy knows his third day is coming. Yeah, he may try to block you. He may try to block something in your life, but good news for you today is hope is this, is that the stone is not your problem today, church, that, that Jesus himself will remove the stone. And yes, it may, your, 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 your third day coming may seem like it's a thousand years, like you've been in this trial, but I've got good news. Hold out for hope. Hope has a name. His name is Jesus, and, and he wants to remove your stone. He's going to remove your barrier. He's going to remove it so you can walk out a new life and a resurrection today. But in order for us to encounter our third day now and forever, we have to place our trust in the name Jesus and the man Jesus. And most importantly, Jesus wants that relationship with you. He wants to talk to you, speak with you. He wants to encounter you. And, and he just has so much good he wants to pour out in your life. But in order for us to, to come into that, to the power of third day, we have to trust Jesus and place our complete trust in him. And so with our heads bowed and eyes closed, I just want to ask you this question today is, do you want to know Jesus? Do you want to know Jesus? Do you want to invite him in? You may feel like, man, I'm in this cold, dark place right now, but I've got good news. By you inviting Jesus into your life, it gives him the power to remove the stone that's blocking your entry point into new life and transformation. If, if you want to put your trust in Jesus today, if you want to commit your life to Christ or recommit your life to Christ today, raise the show, show me a hand. Show me a hand today. I want to pray with you that Jesus would, would be a part of your life today. Let's all pray together. Dear Jesus, come into my life and come into my heart. Forgive me, Lord. Thank you that you forgave all of my sins. Thank you, Lord, that you rose from the dead. Thank you, Lord that the stone's not my problem today. That's yours. So today, Lord, I ask that you remove my stone, whether it's my sin, a trial, sickness, pain, or suffering. Remove the stone so I could walk out a new life today. Because your word says... I have a third day coming and help me to walk out into new life today. So Jesus, come into my life today and send your Holy Spirit to give me the help I need. In Jesus' name, amen. God is so good today. Even as you leave, uh, we have little booklets in the lobby that you could pick up. It's called There is a Redeemer. You can just pick one of these up on your way out. And we're going to close with, with some worship. God is so good today. I am so thankful that you took a moment out of your day to come to, to celebrate the resurrection today and to celebrate new life today. God is so good. He loves you so much. He has such a beautiful plan for your life. And I just felt like today's word was prophetic that, that God has a third day coming for you. And God has a third day for you now. And most importantly, God has a third day for you forever. Come on.